was born and raised in Ventura, California, which is about 30 minutes south of Santa Barbara. It's, it's funny that it's so close to Santa Barbara, but it's so different from Santa Barbara. It's very blue collar, sleepy kind of coastal surf town. It's not like any other uh, coastal town I've ever been in. And I think it really had a lot to do with my upbringing and, and working hard and, and actually working for a living and it, I wanted to be an entrepreneur from, from an early age. Looking back now, it's um, both my parents worked and I was an only child and, um, and so I kind of had to figure stuff out on my own. And I started surfing early on and it just really led me to watching surf movies like every kid did growing up in the 90s. You grow up watching Taylor Steele surf movies and, and that's what I wanted to do because I love surfing and growing up in Ventura, Ventura Santa Barbara, it's really the best area in surfing's history in California for pro surfers to come out of there. I just started knocking on people's doors and asking if I could film them and they blew me off for about a year and then finally they just got sick of me and they let me film them and, it, and one thing led to another and I started working for Taylor Steele and you know I, I turned myself into a filmmaker. In my late 20s, I made a film called The Union Express where we rode the train down the California coast and surfed all the way down. And um, after I'd finished that, I wanted to do a skate version of that film. And a mutual friend of Mikey Taylor and I introduced us and Mikey was gonna be the star of that movie that was gonna be starting in San Diego. And then we went on the first, basically, film trip to do this new video. And uh, him and I kind of just clicked. It was like we drove up together and from LA to San Diego, like we had become best friends in like the first hour. It was just like one of those things where we just were on the same page from the beginning. We were up there and I got a, I had a friend call me and uh, asked me to do a glasses company. He wanted to start a glass company. And I just looked at Josh and I was like, hey dude, what do you think about this? Like I just got asked to do this. And he was just like, yeah, I mean, it's cool, but like it'd be cool to do something like that no one's done. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And then we kind of just talked about, you know, that idea and business. And then uh, we were sitting in our room. We were about to go to sleep. I was like, all right, cool, man, well, whatever. Like, well, I'm going to bed. So I turn off the lights, and then Josh goes, why don't we do a, a, a beer? Why don't we do a craft brewery? I just hit the light on. I was like, let's do it. And the next day, we were driving home, and, and we didn't even wind up filming for the movie. We got rained out, and we drove home and called Paul Rodriguez. and. Four years ago, St. Archer was born in front of a Starbucks in Agora. People have the misconception of these athletes that they're just, they, they're swimming in money. And that's just not the case. These guys are living, a lot of them are living paycheck to paycheck and trying to figure out how to get by. And just because you see them in magazines and in, in clothing ads doesn't mean they have a ton of money. It's just, that's just not the reality. So when we were going to them to help us build this business, for a lot of guys, it was hard. I mean, they believed in what we were telling them and, and they wanted to be a part of it, but guys were giving me their whole life savings. Even if that was $10,000, they were giving me every penny that they had. And that was hard. And I quit making films and, and moved my family. I had two little kids at the time and went home and told my wife that I'm quitting movies and we're moving to San Diego and we're gonna make this company happen and we're gonna build it. And, and you know, keep our fingers crossed, and it was hard. I mean, we, when we were raising money, we didn't have any money because I wasn't working. And so he went through this like year of stepped away from management, and we were, it just took longer than we thought to do the beer. So he was like out of a job, trying to, to start this company with a family, making no money. I mean, it was a struggle. It was like, I know Paul like really helped him out through that year. Like we believed in Josh so much that we you know, supported him through that year to get this business started. In the beginning, we, we drove around to different breweries that were gonna contract the beer for us. And um, after tasting the beers and not really liking them, we decided to do a capital raise and build our own brewery from the ground up and, and put everything we had into it and, and have it be real. And it's real when you build something from nothing. And that's exactly what we did.
the the first thought I had when I wanted to create St. Archer and build St. Archer from scratch was I wanted to do it in San Diego. I wanted to be in the craft beer mecca of the United States because I liked the pressure of going into a sink or swim situation. I knew that if we could make something special and be successful in one of the hardest beer markets in the country, we would be onto something. And I enjoyed that pressure and I wanted to be around all the best beers. I think it makes you a better company when you're around some of the best beer brands in the nation. I mean, Stone and Ballast Point, they were a huge influence on me and I just wanted to be close to what they were doing and I wanted to try and learn from them and I couldn't do that in Ventura. I wanted to be immersed in it from day one. You know, when we moved to San Diego, you're you're immersed in the craft beer community. So every day I'd meet somebody new. And, uh, I wound up talking to Kim Lutz. She was the head brewer at Maui Brewing Company, and she wanted to come work for St. Archer. It fit the vibe that she had, and she loves living outdoors, and she loves surfing, and she decided to move to San Diego and work for St. Archer and be our head brewer. Her best friend is Iga Miyashiro, who was working at Pizza Port at the time. He's won everything you could win, and she said, hey, he should come on board and be our director of brewing operations and that's exactly what happened. From there, Greg Peters, who was a brewer at Lost Abbey, he came on board and really between those three, uh, I think we have the best brew staff in the nation and our beer has gotten so much better and they really have done some amazing things. I mean, I never thought we would win gold at the Great American Beer Festival 16 months into being a business. I mean, they've, they've really made world-class beer and, and I just, every time I drink it at the bar, I can't believe it's ours. I mean, really, we launched with three of the most, you know, mainstream craft beers, a blonde ale, a pale ale, and an IPA. There was nothing really sexy or special. It was just those core beers, and those are the beers that the masses are buying on a regular basis. You know, when I go to the grocery store, those are the three styles that I buy generally, and, I wanted them to be priced that way too. I wanted a middle class person that, that goes in there and they've got nine bucks in their pocket, they can buy a six pack of St. Archer and it doesn't price them out And because that's all the people that I grew up around. They don't want to spend a crazy amount, they just want good beer for something they can afford. I knew that if we could bring all of the best athletes from action sports together to create a brand, this would be something very special. I mean, the whole industry has never come together. It's always been segmented as skaters or surfers or snowboarders or artists. It's never been everybody. So to bring everybody together and everyone be owners and really bleed the brand that we were all investing in was something that was really special. And the fact that it's beer which has never been something that's come from us. From day one, people gravitated towards it because they gravitated towards the story of something that has never been done in action sports or in craft beer. So I think that that's what really drove it home in, in the first couple months and, and uh, got people excited about St. Archer. The amount of beer that we're selling now, we didn't even have in our six year business plan. Like we've already gotten out of the six years. I mean, in year eight, we were gonna be doing what we're doing now. I mean, to do 35,000 barrels in our first, what's gonna be two and a half years at the end of this year, you know, that wasn't even on the charts for us. And to do it all in California, that means the most to me. I mean, we, we look at ourselves as a California brewery because we're all spread out all over the state. And that was the collective goal was, let's just service our home state and have everyone in California enjoying our beer. And fortunately for us, you know, we can't make enough of it to get out of here. I mean, I know the rest of the country wants to have it and, and we want to get it there, but we just want to make sure that we go all the way through California and, and sell as much beer here as humanly possible, and, and we're doing it. St. Archer, for me, has, has been a dream come true. I mean, when I was a little kid, and. I always wanted to own a company with my friends. When I was 12 years old, I wanted to start a clothing company with my friends in middle school. So to have a brand that, for the most part, everybody enjoys, and, and we've had some success here in the beginning, is has been a dream come true. And you know, everything that we've been through, all the all the ups and downs, and, and all the gray hair, and you know, it's been worth it. I mean, it, it's a dream. It's and we're just going to try and keep it going and, and uh, have as much fun as possible.